Hello everybody, Hoodie Cobra Commander 788 here, and this is kind of a special video. This is totally different from anything I've ever done before. Uh, Susan had this idea, so you can blame Susan, um, but uh, she thought um, I should show you guys an unedited review. Um, and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. Um, but uh, then I thought, well, that means I will have to show you all the mistakes that I make through uh, the process of creating a review, all the stuff I normally cut out that I don't want you to see. Um, but um, still, sounded like an intriguing idea. Some of you might like the kind of behind the scenes um, uh, view of how one of these reviews is created. Uh, so I thought that would be fun. Uh, but then I thought, wow, sometimes it takes me a while to shoot these uh, reviews. Um, it can take uh, sometimes several hours. So that could potentially be a really long video. Uh, that could be uh, something that not a lot of people want to watch. But then I thought, okay, well, maybe not a lot of people want to watch that, but um, some people might, some people might. So I thought I'm going to go ahead and do it. So what I'm doing um, is uh, I've already hit record, which is why you're watching me now, um, but I'm not going to stop the camera until this is done. I'm going to take you through the entire core review, and then we are going to uh, do the, the open and the close. Um, so that's a little bit differently than I usually do it. I, usually I would do those on separate days because they can be a bit time consuming. Doing them all on the same day can be pretty exhausting. But um, this, we're going to do things a little uh, differently this time because I want you to see the whole process and I want you to see it all the way through. Um, uh, another thing I'm doing a little bit differently um, is um, normally I like to uh, use shorter video clips and then just take the best uh, take, use the best take from each of those clips and put those together in the final edit. This time it's going to be one really long uh, video file and so I'll have to take that and cut it down to the final edit. Um, never done that before uh, and it sounds difficult but we're going to do it anyway. It's going to work out fine. Um, so I'm hoping that um, since I'm conscious of the fact that you are watching me do this, uh, I will make fewer mistakes. Um, and maybe it won't take as long uh, to shoot this as it normally does. Um, and I, I, I picked an easy one to, to do this for. Um, the ASP won the Patron's Choice uh, poll. And it's a small vehicle, it's not a figure, so no file card to look at. Um, and so it'll be a little easier. Uh, this could end up being kind of a short uh, review, actually. Um, I've tried to pull out as much uh, interesting uh, information as I could out of the ASP, but it's a, it's a small vehicle. There isn't necessarily a lot to say, certainly not as much as I could say about, uh, you know, the, the Rolling Thunder or whatever. Uh, but we're going to do our best. Another thing that is a little bit different from this video than a normal review uh, is um, I don't have uh, complete notes for my open and close. Uh, so I'm going to have to kind of wing it. I have an idea of what I want to say, uh, but normally I would have some notes written out. Uh, not usually necessarily a script, but I usually have some notes so I don't forget what I'm going to say. Um, I don't have that this time, but uh, it's the ASP. It's a small vehicle. How much is there to say, really? So um, those sections, uh, segments ought to be fairly short. Um, also, one thing that you won't see is I have an idea for a skit for the cold open, um, and I'll have to do that later, so you won't be able to see that. Uh, but other than that, yeah, let's, uh, let's look at this together, literally together, um, through the whole thing. Uh, I'm nervous, actually. This is <laughs> more nervous than um, I thought I would be when uh, uh, I uh, agreed to this uh, crazy plan. So uh, let's do it. It's going to be a little awkward. You're going to get all the camera movements and jostling around. I'm not cutting any of it out. Uh, but I'll kind of talk you through it uh, so you, I, I can explain um, why I do things uh, the way I do them. So uh, let's do it, and let's start by getting uh, the right camera angle uh, to review the ASP. So I'm going to step out of frame for a second. I do have the camera in the configuration that I will need, uh, except I'm going to have to uh, lower the camera quite a bit. So I'm going to 
collapse the legs a bit. Ah, and that will be closer, but let's see, that's gonna be, oh, that might be pretty good. It might still be a little bit too high, but I will uh, adjust the camera, adjust my chair, which often hits the uh, tripod. Okay, now, there's the asp the subject of our review. So what camera angle am I gonna start with? And not that one, I'm pretty sure. I feel like, let's see, kinda looks like a big blue blob. So what I wanna do, I think, is, let's see, does it look better with a higher angle? I did clean this thing um, before shooting, but looking at it, there are, uh, Areas where it's still a bit dusty, but what are you going to do? i got to get this thing done. The show must go on. Um, I want to get there. See, um, I've, you can see both cannons here, uh, mainly the underside, but if it turns too much and I do it too much of an angle, you can't really see both cannons. It looks like just one um, cannon there. So I want to get um, a good angle so you can really get an idea of what this thing looks like. And and that's it. Now, now that I've got my nice camera angle, angle I'm going to ruin it uh, cuz I do want to uh, pull back a little bit and show you. Okay, there's my tablet with my notes. Um, there's some other stuff over there that I will need for uh, the review, uh, the stinger is back there. I'll be using that, and the whirlwind is over there. Um, not as much um, other, not as many other toys for this video as I normally do. Um, but I just, you know, there's only so much I can do with a vehicle this size. Um, and let's see, um, that's about. Yeah, man, I wish I had cleaned that a little better, but it's too late now. We gotta, we gotta get rolling. The, the we gotta get this done. Uh, so that is going to be right about there is going to be the angle at which I uh, begin Oop, that's my phone it just buzzed I want to turn the the vibrate off of my phone just turn the whole thing off the ringer is off so it won't disturb us <clears throat> uh, and there we go that's the, the angle I'm gonna open with uh, I think that's a good angle. You can see both cannons. You see it from a high enough angle so that it doesn't look like uh, just a, a blue blob. Um, you can see some details, um, and that's a good enough start. So I'm going to start by uh, looking at the first part of my um, of my notes, and um, it's mainly the date, the name, uh, and um, uh, just the fact that it's an acronym, and it's not one of the, um, uh, not as bad as some of the other acronyms that G.I. Joe vehicles uh, use. Um, and, okay, so let's go through the first clip. <laughs> it's my habit to hit the record button when I'm ready to start the clip, but we're doing it differently in this um, video, so I should just start talking. I uh, need about a couple seconds lead-in for the crossfade. This is the Cobra Asp from 1984. The, okay, hold on a second. Now, do I want to call this a vehicle? It's more of a... It's, when I th think of a vehicle, I think of something that's um, self-propelled, uh, something with an engine that moves. Uh, this isn't that. It's a towed weapon. So, um, change of plans on the fly. I'm going to call this a, a weapon. Um, I think that's more accurate. Okay, uh, take two. This is the Cobra Asp from 1984. This weapon was first available in 1984 and was also available in 1985 and was discontinued for 1986. ASP or ASP is an acronym for Assault System Pod. This acronym isn't as bad as some of the other strained acronyms for GI Joe vehicles, though the ASP is more of a dis de da 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 defensive weapon than an assault weapon. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, let's try it again.
This is the Cobra Asp from 1984. This weapon was first available in 1984. It was also available in 1985 and was discontinued for 1986. ASP, or ASP, is an acronym for Assault System Pod. This acronym isn't as bad as some of the other strained acronyms. This is the Cobra Asp from 1984. This This is the Cobra Asp from 1984. This weapon was first available in 1984 and was also available in 1985. It was discontinued for the year 1986. Six, sis. This is the Cobra Asp from 1984. It was mm. I think, I don't know, I don't like the way that, that this weapon was first available. I don't like the way that sounds. I'm just going to go with it. <clears throat> this is the Cobra Asp from 1984. It was first available in 1984 and also available in 1985 and was discontinued for 1986. Uh, ASP, or ASP, is an acronym for Assault System Pod. This acronym isn't as bad as some of the other strained acronyms for G.I. Joe vehicles. Although the ASP is more of a defensive weapon than an assault weapon. Okay, normally I would stop there and move on, but we are not stopping. Okay, uh, the next part, is, what did my notes say? Um, oh, crap, I missed something. Yep, hold on. See, I already screwed something up. All right, I'm back. I got it. Am I changing the camera angle for this? Um, I think I am. Okay, I'm going to change the camera angle because I forgot this very important thing for this review. Okay. All right, so I'm going to have to pull back. Uh, I forgot to connect the controller for the... Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to pull back. I need to raise it up. <coughs> Excuse me. I need to make some room to slide in a new element. It will slide in like this. Okay. All right. Okay, now the next section. Okay. Let's see, I almost hit the record button again, which would have stopped the recording. Okay. <clears throat> There was a second version of the ASP in the vintage era. The Python Patrol ASP was released in... Okay, I don't like the way I said that. <clears throat> Let's try it again. Yeah. There was a second version of the ASP in the vintage era. The Python Patrol ASP was released in 1989. For the 1989 version, they just called it the, the ASP and dropped the acronym. Uh, okay. Almost made it. Okay. We can do this. I, also, I need to thank uh, the guy who uh, gave this to me, Steve. Uh, so I will say thanks to Steve. Um, okay. <clears throat> there was a second version of the ASP in the vintage era. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right. Here we go again. There was a second version of the ASP in the vintage era. The Python Patrol ASP was released in 1989. For the 1989 version, they just called it the ASP and dropped the acronym. Uh, thanks to Steve for giving me this Python Patrol ASP. Oh, you know what? I don't like that camera angle. Crap. Okay. No, it needs to, yeah. That's more centered. All right, do the whole thing again. Now i got to remember what I said. I'm looking at my notes. Okay. All right. There was a second version of the ASP in the vintage era. The Python Patrol ASP was released in 1989. For the 1989 version, they just called it an ASP and dropped the acronym. Thanks to Steve for giving this Python Patrol ASP to me. Okay. All right. That's good enough. I kind of mumbled a little bit, but that's okay. Um... Let's see. 
okay. Uh, okay, it looks like we're looking at 1983 Cobra vehicles. Um, the Hiss, the Fang, oh, the Viper Glider. That is not an easy thing for me to get. See, I needed to think ahead. I needed to think ahead. All right, hold on, let me grab it real quick. This is the stuff that I would normally cut out. Uh, okay. Got the fang, it's really dusty. Um, and the Viper Glider is not accessible, so I'll probably just drop in a picture of it. But I need to compose this frame, and it's got to be, I've got more stuff in it. Uh, so it's got to be higher and further back. Uh, is that high enough? Is that a good angle? I can't really see the... Okay. Um, no, that's not good. Okay, so I've got to move this up. Camera angles. Camera angles are important. It's a visual medium. You've got to be able to see what you're talking about. Okay. All right, that's obviously too high, but we're going to drop it down a bit. Let's see. Okay, uh, let's see. Like that. Okay. I have the, uh, the uh, his tank out, and I kind of wiped it down a little bit, but I forgot that I needed the fang, too. Uh, so it's a little dusty, but it is what it is. Okay. All right. Let me scroll down on my pad. Next. Part. Um, okay. 1984 was the third year of GI. Mm. 1984 was the third year of the GI Joe toy line, but it was only the second year for Cobra vehicles. There were no Cobra vehicles in 1982. When you first got the co. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> 1984 was the third year for GI. Mm. 1984 was the third year for the G.I. Joe toy line, but it was only the second year for Cobra vehicles. There were no Cobra vehicles in 1982. When we got the first Cobra vehicles in 1983, they were still outnumbered by G.I. Joe vehicles. We got the Hiss tank and the Fang helicopter and the Viper glider. 1984 gave us a better balance of Joe versus Cobra vehicles. Okay, get these out of here. Uh, let's see. All right. I'm gonna for this, um, I am talking about some other GI Joe toys, but they are ones that I don't have to show. So let's see here. Um, okay, I gotta adjust the bipod again. Uh, okay. That up here so I can leg it down. So I'll need what I am thinking about now is I've got to leave enough negative space in the frame so that I can drop in some pictures of what I'm talking about since I don't have them to show. I do not have the Cobra bunker from 1985. Um, okay. Recenter that. Um, okay, now I've had it at this angle for a while, and I think I want to reverse it for this for this shot. Got to keep things moving, keep it dynamic. And we're looking at things that are basically stationary, uh, so to keep the video from being too static, we got to keep things moving. Okay, all right. Next, okay, <clears throat> I'm talking about the replacement for the ASP. Did the ASP have a replacement between the discontinuance of, okay. <clears throat> 
Did the ASP have a replacement between the discontinuance of the 1984 version and the release of the 1989 version? There was the Cobra Bunker in 1985, but that didn't quite serve the same purpose as the ASP. I don't think Cobra had a gun pod like the ASP after it was discontinued. Maybe they should have. The ASP is quite useful. Okay, next. <clears throat> ah. Oh, yeah, I gotta go get some G.I. Joe vehicles. I need the flak. I need the HAL. I have the whirlwind. All right, be right back. These are super dusty. And once again, I'm getting more uh, more toys into the picture. So I've got to change my camera angle. That takes probably almost the most time of anything is just getting the right camera angle on these. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, let me s try to set these up in a pleasing, aesthetically pleasing and balanced way. Uh, okay. See, I'm not so sure this was a good idea after all. There's no way this is interesting. Nobody wants to know how the sausage is made. So, if this ends up getting, like, no views, I will understand. Okay, now we've got green. It's just a mass of green. Um, I want the asp in the shot. But... The focus really is on the G.I. Joe vehicles now. Those are really dusty, but I'm going to shoot them from a pretty far back angle, so hopefully it won't matter. I want everything to be visible. Oh, hold on, my tablet is in the frame. Move my lighting a little bit. Okay, I don't want the whirlwind looking at us dead on. Okay. Oh, but if it does that, then it kind of blends in with the how. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Let's see. Try moving the how. Um, okay, here's what we need to do. I think I, I normally like to have the toy that's being reviewed in every shot. But this is too much, and so I think it needs to move. That's close, but not quite. Let's center it a little better. You can see the edge of my uh, poster board. All right. Okay, let me grab my notes now. See, I don't want the whirlwind like that. Since we moved the asp, can I get the whirlwind like this? So we have like. Still not really great. Yeah, I think that might do. I don't love it. I don't love it, but that's about as good as we can get it right now, I think. Okay. Referring again to my notes, which I'm going to have to bring closer because I'm now a million miles away from them. Okay. Um, okay. Alright. Here we go. There are several contenders for a G.I. Joe counterpart to the ASP, depending on whether you consider the ASP to be an anti-aircraft gun, an anti-tank weapon, or a howitzer. You can imagine them as any kind of... Okay. Almost. There are several contenders for a G.I. Joe counterpart to the ASP, depending on whether you consider the ASP to be an anti-aircraft gun, an anti-tank weapon, a howitzer. You could imagine any kind of round coming out of these twin cannons. These twin cannons implies that I'm looking at it, um, but it's not in the shot because I moved it. I have to rephrase that and try to get that. Okay. <clears throat> There are several contenders for a G.I. Joe counterpart to the ASP, depending on whether you consider the ASP an anti-aircraft gun, an anti-tank weapon, a howitzer. 
You could imagine any kind of round coming out of those twin cannons. Okay. In 1982, the Flak and the HAL were both big gun systems. The HAL was a little closer to the ASP since it was a towed weapon. Uh, okay. The 1983 Whirlwind is very similar to the ASP in that it has two big guns and is a towed weapon. The wheels on the Whirlwind even fold up in a similar way to the ASP. Oh, I gotta get the mountain howitzer. Okay. Uh, and that's a good opportunity to change the camera angle. Yes, indeed. Don't want that to be too static. Hang on. Okay. Just grabbing the gun part of the mountain howitzer, not the entire... Uh, entire battlefield playset. All right, now we're focusing, and I'm talking more about the Mountain Howitzer specifically, so let's let's move in on a little bit. Okay. I know that background is going to be basically a big blob of green, but it is going to just be in the background. We are talking about the Mountain Howitzer now, just for a little bit. I don't have very much in my notes for it, but just a tiny bit. Basically just one sentence. Okay. Now, hold on. All right. All right. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> All right. In 1984, G.I. Joe had the Mountain Howitzer, but it's less a... Okay. In 1984, G.I. Joe had the Mountain Howitzer, but it's a less substantial and less versatile weapon than the ASP. Okay, that's going to be a really short clip. Uh, and now I've got to grab... Uh, let's see. What was next? Uh, the 86. 1986. The Law. I'm just reaching for anything I can think of here that might somewhat match up with the uh, with the asp this doesn't really but it has some elements so we're going to talk about it next okay in 1986 gi joe had the law the laser artillery in 1986 gi joe had the law the laser artillery weapon but it was not mobile it sure wasn't. Okay, and then the last thing is... Oh, let me grab it. Okay, the next thing is the 1987 Slam, which has missiles that want to fall off. And this was in one of the boxes that came from Lawson Allen. And I uh, did an unboxing video on that, which you may not have seen yet. I'm not sure exactly when that will be published. But I need to thank Lawson for this. All right, so we've got the law. I'm going to make some space for it. I'm going to back it out a little bit so we can see the whole thing. Uh, we've got that blob of green in the back, and that's a problem. Uh, that is a kind of a beat-up old uh, Outback figure, but he's just a placeholder, so he can stay there. Okay. Oh, no. I can see the edge of my poster board. Okay, let's shift things around a little bit. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to get the whole thing if I can. Okay. And all this just for a few short, a few short sentences about it. Okay. 
In 1987, the Slam had similar features to the ASP in that it was mobile and can serve as a stationary gun emplacement. The Slam is a bit of an oddity. Okay, uh, what was I? Okay, yeah, oh, I remember. Okay. In 1987, the Slam had similar features to the ASP in that it was a mobile. Okay. In 1987, the SLAM had similar features to the ASP in that it was mobile and can serve as a stationary gun emplacement. The SLAM is a bit of an oddity, though, in that it has a hitch rather than a towing loop. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and the missiles come falling off. You know what? Okay. I need to move this thing. Okay. I can't move it. Otherwise, the missiles will fall off. Okay. So, I need it like that. Okay, kind of, except now it's not centered. Okay. All right, now, what I need is that. Okay, all right. In 1987, the SLAM had similar features to the ASP in that it was mobile and can serve as a stationary gun emplacement. The SLAM is a bit of an oddity, though, in that it has a hitch rather than a towing loop, implying it is self-propelled and could tow, uh, could tow another weapon behind it. That is, okay. In 1987, the SLAM had similar features to the ASP in that it was mobile and can serve as a stationary gun emplacement. The SLAM is a bit of an oddity, though, in that it has a hitch rather than a towing loop, implying it is self-propelled and could, and could tow another... <laughs> In 1987, the SLAM had similar features to the ASP in that it was mobile and can serve as a stationary gun emplacement. The SLAM is a bit of an oddity, though, in that it has a hitch rather than a towing loop, implying that it is self-propelled and could tow another weapon behind it. Okay, now i got to move this stuff. Because I've got a little bit of a visual gag here. Move these things out the way. Move, move, move. Because this thing has a little hitch on the back. Like uh, a universal G.I. Joe tow hook. Like it's going to tow something. Which seems odd. Because the slam itself seems like something that would be towed. So, let's collapse these legs. Ugh. Always give me trouble. Come on. Why is that one not going in? Okay. Okay. There. There. Good. Interesting design, this vehicle. Uh, I've got to be careful not to touch the missiles because they will just fall off. Okay. All right. Now, pop the wheels up on the ASP, put it in mobile mode. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't really work, does it? See, that's okay. Hold on. Because, but I want to show that it looks odd. Uh, okay. See, you're supposed to fold these back to tow it, and uh, the wheels don't even touch the ground. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the effect I'm going for, and what I want to point out that's odd about the slam. Okay. All right. Let's pull it back a little bit. Adjust. Okay. All right. Theoretically, the... Theoretically, the SLAM could tow the ASP, but in fact, uh, the SLAM is too low to the ground and the ASP's wheels don't even touch the ground. Plus, that just looks really weird. All right, not a great visual gag, but hey, it's something. Now there goes a missile. Okay, just stay in there. All right, ah, there go more missiles. Okay, you know, Slam, you're going to get a review, and I'm going to talk about those missiles. Oh, crap. I, uh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I said I was going to do it, and then I didn't do it, did I? Uh, let's see here. Oh, you know what? 
Okay, no, I did it wrong. And I'm reviewing this thing, and I've done this before. Hold on. Oh, see, that works. You're supposed to fold those forward, not back. And I knew that. Uh, and it doesn't, still doesn't work very well. But it sort of works. Okay. Well, in that case, I need to re-record that bit. Let me recenter this. And instead, my comment is not how much it doesn't work, but how silly it looks. Because that is the point, I think. Uh, let's see. The slam could tow the asp. That blah. the slam could tow the asp. That looks. Mm. The slam could tow the asp. That blah, blah, blah. the slam could tow the asp. That blah. the slam could tow the asp. But that looks. Blah, blah, but that just looks wrong. The slam could tow the asp. But that just looks wrong. Uh, let's zoom in on the asp just for a second. By the way, thank you, Lawson Allen, for sending this slam to me. Okay. All right. What is the next segment about? We haven't even got to the part where I can just kind of sit down and look at the parts and the features. i got to take my little... Uh, hoodie off. It's warm in here. Okay. All right. Now we are at least, now we are at the part where we can talk about the parts and features of the asp. Okay. So let's set it back up in its stationary emplacement mode. There. Let's get a camera angle again. It's going to be very similar to setting up our first angle because this is really a new segment. You can almost use its own title. All right. This is the segment that we call the parts and the features. Why do we call it that? Because years ago when I was making these videos and figuring out how to do it and taking notes uh, on my little notepad, I would write a section called Parts and Features. Um, and it really was just for my purposes, so that I could uh, keep track of what exactly we were looking at, um, and to organize my notes, but it just became something that was a part of the video. It was intended to re really just be a thing for my notes, but parts and features seemed like a logical video segment, so I just did it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Get it, get it kind of tight. There. Okay. Now, um, before we actually talk about the parts and features, I did want to talk about um, the, uh, just the overall look of it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Before we delve too much into the features, let's take a note of the color. The asp is in the classic cobra blue. This is the color, okay, hang on, I just need something, I need something, hold on. I'm coming, I'm coming. See, this video is going to be like two, three hours, and it's going to be a lot of me stepping away and getting things that I should have gotten beforehand. But I was a little bit rushed, so my prep time was shortened. We're still going to try to make it look good. Okay, uh, let's balance that. Okay, pretty good. Okay, where was I? 
Before we delve into the features, let's take a note of the color. The Asp is in the classic Cobra Blue. This is the color of the original Cobra Trooper and Officer. It's the color most associated with Cobra. I love this color. It's worthless as camouflage, but... Uh, uh, okay, now I just gotta remember to say that exactly the same way, but not screw it up. Before we delve into the features, let's take a note of the color. The Asp is in the classic Cobra Blue. This is the color of the original Cobra Trooper and Officer. It's the color most associated with Cobra. I love this color. It's worthless for camouflage, but we've noted before that Cobra has adopted a strategy of intimidation. They want to be seen, and they want to instill fear by their approach. Okay. Uh, okay, I need to back it out. All right. Uh, I need this guy. Uh, let's do it this way. There. All right, now that's, bad. that's not a good angle at all. Now that's got some glare. Got some glare from the lights. Let's adjust the lights a little bit. Okay. Okay. Now, there are two good colors for Cobra vehicles, blue and black. I would be happy if they all came in those colors. Yeah, there were some other Cobra vehicles that had acceptable colors, but even those vehicles would have looked nicer in black or blue. All right. Now, really, we're starting the parts in the features section. So, let's find that angle again. All right, let's see. I've had it facing this way for a while. Let's get the lights back. Uh, let's see. Uh, I need a different angle. It's just, I'm just alternating angles too much. Uh, let's do, yeah, straight on the side. How about that? That's different. Let's snap down. Yep, there we go. Ah. Cat fur. The cats are always in everything and leave their fur behind and I hate it. Okay. All right. Let's look at the parts and the features of the asp. That's, asp, by the way, is hard to say without sounding like ass. Let's take a look at the parts and the features of the ASP, starting with the web. Okay. Let's take a look at the parts and the features of the ASP, starting with the cannons. These twin cannons. The blueprints call them dual synchronized 120 millimeter eliminator cannons. Okay. They elevate. They actually elevate farther than 90 degrees. And okay, hold on. They elevate, they actually elevate farther than 90 degrees, and they can point downward. Uh, in case you have the ha, the ha ha ha. They can elevate more than 90 degrees, and they can point downward, in case you have the asp on a hillside and want to fire downhill. That's the only use I can think of for that, anyway. Okay. Uh, all right. Now I want to talk about the cannons for a second, so it's going to be a little bit of a static shot, but I want to get a good, yeah, focus on them. Focus on the cannons. Or top angle, and I want to get focused enough that it's clear that we are talking about the cannons. Okay. It's unclear exactly what these cannons are intended to shoot at. 120 millimeter cannons have been used in a variety. Okay. Ah. It's unclear exactly what these cannons are intended to shoot at. 100. It's un. <clears throat> it's unclear exactly what these cannons are intended to shoot at. 120 millimeter cannons have been used for a variety of purposes. It has been used for tanks. Okay. It's unclear exactly what these cannons are intended to shoot at. 120 millimeter cannon, okay, cannons, not. Mm. 
It's unclear exactly what these cannons are intended to shoot at. 120mm guns have been used for a variety of purposes. They've been used for tanks. You could imagine the ASP protecting the Terradrome from armored assault. They've been used for anti-aircraft guns. The ASP kind of looks like an anti-aircraft gun since the operator faces skyward. Uh, and then... I imagine the ASP being used in any role that it's needed, anti-aircraft, anti-armor, or anti-personnel. It would have been able to switch ammunition types on the fly. And that is what I think is the great innovation of the ASP, because, yeah, I think, I think that's what makes it great. It's versatile. Okay. All right, we've got to talk about these things. All right, can I, how, can I pull them off without breaking them? Yeah, okay. All right, good. Okay. It has what the blueprints call shell fruit path. Shell fruit. It has what the blue. Blah. It has what the blueprints call shell-proof deflector shields. They are removable, and they're almost all. Blah. They're the most frequently lost parts. Those are hard words to say together. Okay, hold on. I need a better angle. More of a down angle because I can't pull it up that well. Okay. It has what the blueprints call shell proof def It has what the blueprints call shell proof deflector shields. They okay. It has what the blueprints call shell-proof deflector shields. They are removable, and they are the most frequently lost parts. All right, let's put this back on and just talk about it a little bit. Okay, elevate them so they're both in frame. So you can't see that against the blue. Okay, I'll hold my, okay, let's do this. All right. I don't think they add very much to the ASP. They don't really shield the operator. Which they don't. What are they shielding exactly? This guy is totally exposed. Uh, anyway. Uh, okay, what's the next section? The next section is this. It has a roll cage canopy. Uh, it swings open. Uh, it has a very small control panel, uh, which we can see on the inside there. It has a couple of gauges. I don't like that. Let's try it again. Uh, there. It has a roll cage canopy, which, oh, okay, I, I know what the problem is can't see it once it's open. There we go. It has a roll cage canopy which opens. Uh, it has a very small instrument panel with a couple of gauges there. Okay. All right. This thing is okay. No, it's fine. I was thinking the, the roll cage is a little warped, but it's not. It's just really easy to bend because the plastic is so so thin uh, okay well and then I need to make a comment about that okay um, well all right but I haven't seen a whole ton of broken roll cages so that I will make that point too all right These plastic bars are thin and could break or warp, but I don't see a lot of asps with broken canopies. They flex enough that breaking shouldn't be a big with normal play. Okay. What next? Uh, oh, the cockpit. Uh, it's a little dusty, but you know what? It's a lot cleaner than it was, so uh, that's just fine. All right. All right. All right, uh, let's see.
We have the cockpit with a sculpted seat. That looks pretty good. A bit of a texture pattern there on the floor. Uh, there is no obvious control panel or trigger grip. Uh, so I'm not really sure how the operator uses... Okay, no. We have the cockpit. It has a sculpted seat, a bit of a texture pattern there on the floor. Uh, there is no obvious control panel or trigger grip, so I'm not exactly sure how the gunner fires this weapon. Yeah, you'd expect like a joystick or something, but uh, I need a figure. This is not the figure I usually put in it, but it's a Cobra Trooper, and I usually do put a Cobra Trooper in it. And this is the one I have handy, so there. Okay. Right, blue is, it's close. It's, it's not exactly the same blue, but it's pretty darn close. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, all right, bend the legs carefully. All right, and that's how he's going to go in. Okay. And somebody just decided to rev their motorcycle while I'm trying to shoot. Uh, hang on a second. Uh, I just got a notice from eBay that... There's an auction ending in 14 minutes. Is it anything I need? Let me see. Oh, I already missed it. All right, well, screw it then. I hope it wasn't a toy that I really needed. Oh, well. eBay's too expensive anyway. All right. Um, okay. Okay, this is the tilt. All right, I gotta, it has to be at the right angle to tilt. Okay, so I need to have it lying flat. Okay. Although you can place a figure in the reclining position, the box for the ASP suggests there's another way the gunner is supposed to board. The pod tilts up, so the gunner can board in the standing position. Always stand up in there. Well, not really. Okay. This only works when the pod is in the forward position. This only works if the pod is in the forward position. If you rotate it a little bit, then it runs into the legs. Uh, but if it's in the forward position, it does tilt up. You can place a figure in standing up. Now, he doesn't stay in there that way. Uh, you have to close the roll cage around him. Uh, oh, man, I didn't do it right. Okay. All right, hang on. Okay, let's try it. Okay. It only works with the pod in the forward position. It can tilt up. If you have it rotated, it will run into the legs. But in the forward position, it can tilt up. Uh, you can place the pilot in, or the gunner in, the standing position. Uh, he doesn't stay that way. He'll just fall out. So you have to place him in, and then close the roll cage around him. Around him, and man, I still didn't get that right, because his feet are hit. All right, hold on. I have a guy in here, usually. And I usually don't have that much trouble getting him in. So what am I doing wrong this time? Okay. I know that his feet have to kind of... Uh, all right. All right. All right. Uh, man. I had a figure in this. And it fit just fine. So, oh, you know what? The figure I had in it, I left the canopy open. That's the difference. All right. So. See, the problem is his feet. His feet don't fit. Uh, I can push his feet in. And it can close, sort of. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, got to make a comment about that. All right. All right, where was I?
You can tilt the pod up, but it only works in the forward position. If you rotate it, then it will run into the legs. Uh, but in the forward position, you can rotate or you can flip the pod up. You can place the figure in uh, and you can close the canopy. But I have noticed that uh, putting the figure in is not very easy. Um, his, the canopy tends to run into his feet. Uh, so you have to kind of push him up uh, and have his feet poking through the canopy and also his head is kind of poking out too. Uh, so placement of the figure uh, in the asp is not quite perfect. Okay. All right. That is weird. And I, I just remembered just now um, that, yeah, I have a Cobra Trooper uh, in this thing most of the time, uh, but he, I just leave that open because I want to see the figure better. Um, and I don't usually close the canopy with the figure in. Well, there you go. Um, okay, next. Um, all right. Um, okay, now I did have a comment that I was going to make about this forward tilting feature. Now let's put the figure in. Because I just had the figure in and it'll look kind of odd if the figure just disappears in the very next shot. Uh, I don't like this. That's a, this is downgrading the asp, in my opinion. Yeah, look at, okay, all right. All right, okay. Now, I wanted to make a comment about the tilt. Eh, there. Wow, okay. All right. Let's get a better angle. This was a bad idea. This video was a bad idea. Nobody wants to see this. This is not fun or interesting. Okay. As a kid, I was a little confused by this feature. The gunner reclines and faces up when the pod is lowered, which is fine for anti-aircraft, but the... Uh, as a kid, I was a little confused by this feature. The gun... Uh, as a kid, I was a little confused by this feature. The gunner reclines and faces up when the pod is lowered, which is fine for anti-aircraft. But if the ASP is firing at a target on the ground, raising the pod lets the gunner see what he's shooting at. Of course, you wouldn't really want to do that because it makes the ASP a bigger target. Okay. Uh, let's get this guy out of there. That's just... Mm. I don't rem I did have this as I did have this as a kid and I don't remember the guy being that much of a pain to put in. There's no other way for him to fit in. All right, cuz the that's how he fits to kind of mold the figure to the shape of the seat. Uh, but that if you do that then his head hits there. So what if we tilt his head up a little bit? Then his feet hit. No? Nope. Nope. No, there's no better way to do it. All right, okay. All right, let's talk about the pod. All right. Nope. Get it in frame. Now let's talk about the pod itself. It has sort of a snake head shape. You could imagine the... Okay. There we go. Sort of. Yeah, no, that'll, that'll do. Now let's look at the pod itself. It has sort of a snake head shape. You could imagine the cannons as fangs. It has a snake logo on the sides, which reminds me of the sticker on the 1984 Cobra. Okay, I need to pull it. Hold on. The water moccasin. At least this one's a little more in reach. Okay. Okay. Several things to think about this. I've got to start out at this angle. I've got to go to this angle. Then I need to show the water moccasin. And I need to show the snake logo on the water moccasin. And then try to get this in the same shot. Oh, that's not hard. Okay, here we go. Water moccasin is out of the shot for now. Goody. Okay. A little bit of glare. Okay. 
Alright. Now let's look at the pod itself. It has sort of a snake head shape. You can imagine the cannons as fangs. It has a snake logo on the sides. And that snake logo reminds me of the sticker on the 1984 Cobra water moccasin. They both have pretty cool snake logos. Okay, I hope I got that right. Okay. All right, move that. Preparation, kids. Preparation is the thing I didn't do nearly enough of for this video. All right. All right, now we've got to talk about the construction and engineering of the pod a little bit. Let me lower this. Uh, a bit closer. All right. Let's see, what am I saying about it? If it's on a base. Um, it fits on a base. It hinges up on the base. Uh, oh, yeah, I want to look at the details on the underside. Breaker access. Synchronizers. Okay, all right, got it. The pod fits on a base, and it hinges up on that base. Uh, there are details on the underside of the pod, including breaker access here. I think uh, kids... Okay. The pod fits on a base, and it hinges on that base. Uh, and under the pod, there are some additional details, including breaker access. And I like this. Uh, kids can pretend to pretend... <laughs> The pod sits on a base, and it hinges on that base, and there are some additional technical details on the underside of the pod, including breaker access. I like this. Uh, kids can pretend to repair the damaged asp, asp for that after it has been hit by, hit from, hit by, Uyve. The pod fits on a base, and it hinges on that base. There's some additional techno... The pod fits... The pod fits on a base, and it hinges on that... Okay. Like I said, gotta face forward. The pod fits on a base, and it hinges on that base. Under the pod, there is some additional technical detail, including breaker access. I think this is good. Uh, kids can pretend that they are repairing the damaged asp after it has been hit by G.I. Joe. Not the most elegant way to say it, but it will have to do. Okay. The removable engine cover, which as I recall, pulls out that. That's uh, dusty. I oh, won't. Well. Okay. All right. And let's pop it off just for a practice run. Yeah, just like that. Okay, good. Okay. There, yeah, okay. It has a removable engine cover. Based on the blueprints and details, the ASP... Okay. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. Oh, didn't mention this. Here in the back we have a Cobra logo, and we have a removable engine cover uh, with some engine detail there. Uh, based on the blueprints and details on the ASP, uh, the ASP appears to be gas-powered. Okay. It's got a fluid pump sticker there. Okay. It's got a fluid pump sticker there on the engine that's normally covered up by the engine cover, but still, that's a nice attention to detail there. Uh, next. Um, all right. Oh, yeah, I wanted to comment about... Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's bring it down a little bit. Getting some shadow from the lights. Okay. Okay. 
So far, all the features we've looked at could be on a stationary weapon. The bottom half of this toy is what makes it mobile. And I know it sounds like I'm stating the obvious there, but after looking all the uh, all those little bits, I felt like we needed a break, a little breather uh, just with that clip, and then now we're going to look at some details again. Okay. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, I missed a part. Okay. All right. This is why editing this is going to be, is going to suck. Okay. I've got to mention that this base rotates 360 degrees. That's kind of important, don't you think? All right. Well, let's change the angle so you can see it rotate. This is something that is in my notes, obviously, but... I got ahead of myself and skipped it, so I'll have to cut that in wherever it's supposed to go. Okay. This base rotates 300... Okay. This base rotates 360 degrees. Can't see it because my hand's in the way. Okay. This base rotates 360 degrees. All right, now, back where was it? Okay, the chassis. We have this, uh, okay. Okay. All right, um... The base for the pod is mm. the base for the pod is mm. the base for the pod is connected to this chassis and this is more complex than it looks. I was going to say more than that but I want to take a break there because there's a lot to say here. Um, front stabilizer pads. Um, In the front we have what the blue um, in the front we have what the blueprints call front stabilizer pads. These are these little feet, uh, and they are down in the stationary position, and they swing up and lock into place for the mobile position. You could, I, that was ah uh, got out of frame. Okay. In the front we have what the blueprints call front stabilizer pads. These are. In the front, we have what the blueprints call front stabilizer pads. Uh, the, the In the front, we have what the blueprints call front... Okay. In the front, we have what the blueprints call stabilizer pads. They're these little feet here. And they lock down in the stationary position, and they lock up for the mobile mode. Uh, okay. All right, now the wheels. All right. It has two wheels, one, okay, hold on. It has two wheels, one on each side, and they fold down for the stationary mode, uh, and then they can pop up and lock into place uh, for the mobile mode. <clears throat> yeah, my voice is given out already. Uh, oh, the whirlwind. Where is the whirlwind? Uh, there it is. All right. All right. How am I going to get both of these in frame? All right. There. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Before we do that, okay. When <clears throat> when these wheels are swung out, <clears throat> when these wheels are swung out in mobile, 
When these wheels are swung out in mobile mode, they do spin freely. Right. When these wheels are <clears throat> when these wheels are locked out in mobile mode, they do roll freely. These are in fact the same These are in fact the same wheels as the 1983 Whirlwind. The Whirlwind wheels were dark gray and the Asp wheels are black. Okay. Hope that's visible. Okay. All right. The locking mechanism for the ASP is slightly different than the Whirlwind. Uh, the Whirlwind uh, wheels did lock out in the mobile mode, but in its stationary emplacement mode, they do not lock down. They just kind of hang like that. And of course, you place the, uh, the weapon on the wheels for its emplacement mode. Not too elegant. Okay. The asp, the asp wheels lock in both the, the asp wheels lock, the asp wheels lock in both the mobile position and the stationary position. They actually lock down under the vehicle. I called it a vehicle. Oh no, somebody's gonna make a comment because I said I didn't think it was a vehicle. Um, okay. Now this part. To complete the transformation from stationary to mobile mode, these two feet here in the back, which are connected by a bar, swing up. And now the ASP is ready to be towed. Ah, la 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 la. Um, okay. Uh, what am I gonna? Oh yeah, okay. I remember. Well, hold on, hold on. Okay. Connected to the chassis in the back uh, is this key. Uh, yeah. Connected to the chassis in the back is this keyhole-shaped tow loop, and once it is in mobile mode, uh, it can be towed by a vehicle. That's slightly redundant, but I do have a point. Okay, I gotta back it up. Back, 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 back. Move the whirlwind out of the way. <clears throat> okay. All right, the 1984, the only two vehicles that could tow the ASP, for Cobra anyway. All right, now i got to somehow get the, that all in frame. Okay. All right. Uh, move Cobra Officer out the way. Okay, now, wow, that does not look good at all. And that is, is okay, yeah, I gotta raise it up and back it up. Um, so I need to pop these legs out. All right, this is gonna be the worst video I've ever made. Ah, the review is gonna be a tough one, even though it's a small vehicle, uh, just because I didn't have the prep time that I normally would have uh, let's see and this is going to be a very long video how long has it run so far
An hour and 14 minutes? Oh, crap. I may change plans. Maybe I shouldn't do the... Maybe I should just do the core review. I think that might be a better idea. Uh, all right, okay. Grab my notes because now I'm far away from them. And I can't read them from way back there. Okay. Uh, can I put it there without it being in frame? Yeah, okay. All right. My notes are down there now, right, right there. Just out of frame. Okay. Which vehicle could... Mm. Which vehicle should tow the ASP? In 1984, there were only two options. Cobra had the Hiss and the Stinger for land vehicles. The ASP looks small when pulled by the Hiss. Okay, I want to actually put it on the Okay, I should have a break there. Okay. No, no, I got it, I got it. Which vehicle should tow the ASP? In 1984, there were only two options. Cobra had the Hiss and the Stinger for land vehicles. The ASP looks a little small when towed by the Hiss tank. I like to have it towed by the Stinger. Uh, which, uh, I missed the hook. Okay, set it up again. All right, Let's see if we can do this. Uh, without looking too awkward. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Which vehicle should tow the ASP? In 1984, there were only two options. Cobra had the Hiss and the Stinger for land vehicles. The ASP looks a little small when towed by the Hiss tank. I like to have it towed by the Stinger. If I can swing the stinger around and connect it there. I like that. Um, I think uh, the sizes match up better. Uh, I do like the blue with the black. Nice color contrast. It's going to be a little bit of a hard break there, but um, I can't remember what else I was going to say about it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, the stinger has missiles rather than guns, so I can use an... <clears throat> The stinger, <clears throat> the stinger has missiles rather than guns, so it can use some additional firepower. Even though this video is over an hour long now, believe it or not, uh, we're getting close to the wrap-up of this part of it. Cool. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, there was something, a point I was going to make about who should gun the... Ask, and I gotta borrow my ah, stinger driver. Okay. Now uh, I'm gonna put it back in stationary mode for this section. Move some things around. All right. Move some things out of the way. Put this guy back in. I hope this video is okay. You know, this is what happens to me every week. I get into this thing and I start thinking, this video is not going to be very good. It's going to be the worst one I've ever done. People are going to unsubscribe. Um, all right. It's actually really kind of hard to do small vehicles. There is less to say about them most of the time. Uh, when you got something like the uh, uh, the Silver Mirage, it's a little easier because at least it's a it's a motorcycle. You know, it does something. Uh, this most of the time is going to be stationary, and when it does move, it's only in, con in conjunction to, with another vehicle, which is something I think I need to say about it. Okay. All right. Okay. Alright. Who 
should operate the ASP, I typically use a Cobra Trooper. That's not ideal since the color on the figure closely matches the vehicle. He kind of blends in. An alternative would be a spare Stinger driver. Uh, the ASP doesn't need an officer to operate it. Okay, that doesn't... Looks like he's asleep in there. Uh, okay. Ah, okay. There, like that. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Who should operate the ASP? I typically use a Cobra Trooper. Uh, that's not ideal since the color on the figure closely matches the vehicle. He kind of blends in. An alternative would be a spare Stinger driver. Uh, the ASP doesn't need an officer to operate it, but from an aesthetic, aesthetic point of view... Okay. Who should operate the ASP? I typically use a Cobra Trooper. That's not ideal since the color on the figure closely matches the vehicle. He kind of blends in. An alternative... An alternative... Okay. Who should operate the ASP? Uh, who should operate the ASP? I typically use a Cobra Trooper. That's not... I Okay, hit the light. Who should operate the ASP? I typically use a Cobra Trooper. That's not ideal since the color on the figure closely matches the vehicle. He kind of blends in. An alternative would be a spare Stinger driver. The ASP does not need an officer to operate it, but, uh, but from an aesthetic point of view, uh, the lighter color of the figure... Blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right, the problem is I'm trying to say words and move things at the same time. <sighs> and that is not as easy as it sounds. Okay. <sighs> Who should operate the ASP? I typically use a Cobra Trooper. That's not ideal since the color on the figure closely matches the vehicle. He kind of blends in. Alternative would be a spare Stinger driver. The ASP does not need an officer to operate it, but from an aesthetic point of view, the lighter color of the figure really pops against the dark blue. I don't care if that's perfect, we're going with it. Okay. All right, now is the section where we talk about the media, the cartoon and the comic book. And for that, I typically have kind of a hero pose for the item being reviewed and uh, leave some space to drop in uh, some images of the comic book and the cartoon. Uh, let's see. Work that angle out. You know what? I want to use that stinger driver. There. I'm going to have him like, uh, let's see, like he's just it's just opening the canopy there. Okay. This is actually the best Stinger driver I have, and this figure is far from perfect. Uh, all right. All right. Um, but I need a better angle. Okay. All right. Problem, of course, is that if I move the cannons up, this blocks the guy. But that might be all right. Something like that. All right. Except. All right. See this side. All the cartoon images and comic book panels are going to go over here, uh, rather than having to crop that in post production. Um, why not just frame? the shot that way, so I can just drop it in. Okay, what are we saying? First, uh, I'm going to do the cartoon first. Oh, yeah, okay. We get to talk about the Python Patrol ASP again. Uh, this is a little more scripted out than a lot of the other parts of my notes. Um, okay. Taking a look at how the ASP was used in G.I. Joe Media, in the cartoon series it appears... Okay. 
Uh, let's see the difference. <clears throat> taking a look at how the ASP is. Taking a look at how the ASP was used in G.I. Joe media, the ASP's animated appearances were minimal. It appeared in the Sunbow series a few times, but never, never more. Taking a look at how the ASP was used in G.I. Joe media, the ASP's animated appearances were minimal. It appeared in the Sunbow series a few times, but never more than a few seconds at a time. That's not surprising. The ASP isn't really a solo vehicle. It's meant to be used in conjunction with something else, either defending a Cobra base or being towed by a Cobra vehicle. Oh, I got that all in one go. Cool. And then one other little segment. Surprisingly, the ASP made it... Mm. Surprisingly, the ASP made the transition to the Deke animated series, but only so it could be converted into the Python Patrol version. <clears throat> oh, my voice is starting to go. All right, now the comic book. Uh, the comic book. Uh, let's see, what are we saying about the comic book? <coughs> The ASP got a little better use in the comic book published by Marvel Comics, but of course it wasn't usually the star of the story. Oh yeah, the first appearance I have in parentheses as far as I can determine, uh, because I'm pretty sure this is the first appearance. Uh, and if not, uh, it'll take about uh, 10 seconds for somebody to correct me in the comments. All right. The first appearance, at least as far as I can determine, was in issue number 36, and it was a spectacular debut. It even made the cover. Okay, <clears throat> that's not a good transition. The first appearance, at least as far as I can determine, was in issue number 30. The first appearance, at least as far as I can determine, was in issue number 36, and it was a spectacular debut. It even made the cover. In that issue, the Asps defended a, a mysterious... Okay, I may need to take a break there. Whew. The first appearance, as far as I can determine, was in issue number 36, and it was a spectacular debut. It even made the cover. In that issue, the ASP, ASPs defended, that is so hard, I, but i got to say it right. That's how I want to say it. The ASPs defended a mysterious island in the South Pacific. It's a tongue twister. It's easy to write, but hard to say. Okay, let's do it. The first appearance, as far as I can determine, was in issue number 36, and it was a spectacular debut. It even made the cover. In that issue, the Asps defended a mysterious island in the South Atlantic. The Joes approached the island in the killer whale, but the Asps instantly opened fire on the hovercraft. The Joes managed to defeat the Asps with superior tactics, but the Asps prevented the Joes from discovering the purpose of the island. I liked that issue. There's a lot of good action in it. Asps were used in issue number 41 to defend the newly formed Cobra Island. In that issue, they were used as anti-aircraft guns. The ASP reappeared in the Cobra Civil War, where they defended the airfield. They got revenge on the killer whale. Unfortunately, their moment of glory was brief. They were destroyed with satchel charges. The comic book appearances show the ASP being used in all its potential roles. Anti-aircraft, anti-armor, and anti-personnel. That's the end of my notes. Okay. Uh, now... I gotta do the spinny spinny thing. Okay. Let's do the turntable 360 spin. Uh, and when I'm doing a figure, I try to do it uh, once with the accessories and once uh, without. So you can get a good 360 look at the whole figure. Uh, and the accessories as well. 
All right. Um, okay. Let's. Okay. Want a good now. Once again, uh, a thing about framing. Um, I am going to be down here talking about this thing uh, using the green screen. Now I could, in post-production, crop this any way I wanted to if I were to center it, but that takes more time. So instead I can just move it to my left slightly uh, and let's see and do the spin uh, make sure it's gonna at least mostly be in frame yeah okay um, and then I don't have to crop anything so minimizing work is important okay all right okay this is usually a more relaxing time because I'm not recording audio at this point. I'm only recording the video of the thing spinning. Uh, so everyone in the house who has had to be quiet for me while I shoot video, they can start talking again and playing their video games. And there you go. All right, that's the core review. And it's actually really short. I think when I cut that down, that's going to be a short video. Um, so I hope this is not an unpopular video uh, but that is everything I can get out of the ASP to be totally honest with you uh, now I've got uh, shift some things around normally I would just stop there I would just stop because uh, oh man that's gonna go all out of focus um, I'm going to point the camera over there, and I'll just talk to you for a minute while I set up the lighting and stuff. Uh, because I'm tired. My voice is going. Uh, and I could use a break. But this is one of those special videos where uh, I'm going to... Show you the behind the scenes. So to do that and to not have to do extra editing and to give you like really the whole scoop, the whole story, I have to uh, do this all at once. But yeah, this is going to work out because I feel like I'm, I'm not really behind schedule, but I feel like I'm behind schedule because this is the video that's coming right after. Um, oh, ah, I knocked down my tablet. Oops. Ah, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a little iHome that I just set the tablet up on uh, just to keep it up right where I can read it. All right, stay right there. All right, moving lights around. Uh, this lighting configuration that I'm using for the green screen is the best configuration that I've found. I have experimented a lot with it, uh, with oops, there it goes again, with varying results. Um, and this is what gives me the best lighting that actually works. Um, give me a good clean green background um, yeah now what I'm not going to show you is the tangle of wires on the floor that's not very attractive okay now as I said see this is gonna it's not gonna it's gonna go all unfocused um, until I give it something to focus on but I've got to adjust a few things Okay, yeah, oh yeah, I gotta switch the camera around so I can have the control stick for on the tripod facing me. I've got to elevate the tripod more or less all the way, maybe not quite. 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Am I a big blob now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, this is the unglamorous part, folks. This is not the fun part. Hey, it did focus. How about that? Oh, I gotta put my. Uh, I didn't. I thought I would wear something cobra themed for this video, but. Uh, this is what I happen to be wearing before I start shooting. And I think it's been a little while since I've worn this for a video. I really like this Snake Eyes hoodie. Inspired by G.I. Joburg to get this. That's where I first uh, saw it. And then I immediately had to go get one of my own. Now, uh, as I said, I don't have any notes for these segments. Uh, but I've got an idea of what I want to do. And the only joke or gag I have for the asp is that it sounds like ass. I can think of no other jokes for this thing. It's uh... Okay. Get the angle right. This needs to be just the green in the background. Okay. Alright. All right, now what I'm looking at is, once again, I'm trying to not have to crop anything in editing. Um, and so my green background is there. Um, I look like a wreck because I've been working all day. My voice is going, but we're going to make it. All right. All right, how do I want to start this? Okay. I'll start it the way I always start it. But I would normally have notes. I should have notes. I apologize to everyone watching this. Um, I wanted to show you behind the scenes of how this is all done. And I think it's actually turned out a little bit messier than I usually, uh, than it usually does. Um, I was hoping to actually make it cleaner, make it smoother, because, you know, being conscious that you're watching this, I was thinking, all right, maybe I could focus and make fewer mistakes. <laughs> no, it didn't work out that way. I think I made more. <sighs> okay. Hello everybody, Hoodie Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and this one was chosen by patrons. I was expecting the Pogo. The Pogo was in the lead of the patrons poll for quite a while. I had stuff planned for the Pogo. I had uh, jokes for the Pogo. But you guys didn't want to see the Pogo. I guess I can't blame you. It's the Pogo. Instead, you wanted to see the 1984 Cobra Asp. 1984 was a very important year for Cobra. It was really the only... Okay. Okay. Instead, you wanted to see the 1984 Cobra Asp. The, uh, the Asp was a great year. Yeah. It's a great year for Ass. All right. 
Instead, you wanted to see the 1984 Cobra Asp. 1984 was an important year for Cobra. It was really the, uh, really only the, okay, I don't have a script and yet I'm still flubbing my lines. Instead, you wanted to see the 1984 Cobra Asp. 1984 was an important year for Cobra. It was really only the second year for Cobra vehicles. There were no Cobra vehicles released in 1982, the first year of the G.I. Joe line. There was a playset, a cardboard playset, but no vehicles. In 1983, we got a couple vehicles, and they were iconic. Who can ever forget the Hiss tank and the Fang helicopter? Uh, sorry, I'm pausing because I'm trying to sort out in my mind exactly what I'm going to say. Normally, I would have this written down. In 1984, Cobra started to branch out. They had a jet, the Cobra Rattler, they had the Stinger, which was a black version of the Vamp, and they had the Asp. Pregnant pause. I'm going to say something important about the Asp here. The thing I'm going to say is that it's not really a vehicle. A vehicle implies that you drive it around, right? But it doesn't drive around, it just gets driven around. Okay. The ASP isn't really a vehicle. <clears throat> the ASP really isn't a vehicle. When I think of a vehicle, I think of something motorized that you drive around, but the ASP doesn't. The ASP really. Uh, the ASP isn't really a vehicle. When I think of a vehicle, I think of something that's motorized that you drive around, but the ASP isn't. Uh, <laughs> The ASP isn't really a vehicle. It, <clears throat> the ASP isn't really a vehicle. When I think of a vehicle, I think of something that's motorized, that you drive around. The ASP isn't driven around. It's uh, something. It's a. It's okay. The ASP isn't really a vehicle. It. <clears throat> The ASP isn't really a vehicle. When I think of a vehicle, I think of something that's motorized, that can be driven around. The ASP is a towed weapon, similar to the HAL and the World. Okay. The ASP isn't really a vehicle. It <clears throat> The ASP isn't really a vehicle. When I think of a vehicle, I think of something that is motorized, that is driven around. The ASP is a towed weapon, similar to the 1982 G.I. Joe Howl and the 1983 Whirlwind. Right? Mm. Okay. The only joke is that it sounds like ass. Uh, and uh, this segment is going to be short, so I'm going to wrap it up so we can flow right in to the core review. Okay. All right, all right, hold on. But the asp, but the asp does lot. But the asp does diversify your Cobra forces. It gives you a way to defend your Cobra base against attacks by GI Joe. Okay. I have allergies. My 
my nose itches. Okay. Sorry, this is one of the consequences of doing a video like this. You see everything, including my nose itches. I'd like to say thank you to all my patrons and everyone who watches these videos. Thank you for your support. Uh, you guys wanted to see the ASP, so you wanted to see it, so that's what I'm going to give you. I really thought it was going to be the POGO. HCC788 presents the Cobra Ass. Pa. I'm leaving that one in. I'm going to use that clip, that take right there. I don't care. I don't even know to do it again. It's an ass. Um, okay. Now, the next section. Normally, I would give myself some kind of visual cue that we're moving to the next section. But I don't have the stuff. All right. That's fine. The next is uh, overall. The overall view. Now, I know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's a middle tier. It, even for its size class. Uh, it has some merit. Uh, it's uh, definitely useful. But uh, it also has a few drawbacks. Okay. Taking a look at the ASP overall. <clears throat> but I'm going to call it a vehicle again. I just can't help it. It's classified as a vehicle like on Yojo.com. It's not technically a vehicle. I don't think it's a towed weapon. That's a different thing. I'll just call it a vehicle. It's fine. Somebody in the comments can just say, hey, you called it a vehicle here, but you said it wasn't a vehicle there. <sighs> so in a few minutes, we'll find out who that guy is. All right. Looking at the ASP overall, it's a middle tier vehicle, even for its size class. It has some merits, it's very useful, and also has a few drawbacks. Let's talk about those drawbacks. I think number one... I think my biggest problem with... <clears throat> I think my biggest problem with the ASP is the figure doesn't fit in there very well. Now, I did have this vehicle as a kid. I don't remember the figure being that difficult to fit in the... Uh... I think my biggest problem with the ASP is the figure doesn't fit in it very well. I did have this vehicle as a kid. I don't remember the figure being that difficult to fit in the cockpit. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I did try it several ways, and it didn't fit well any way that I tried. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Okay. The ASP has some things going for it. First of all, the ASP has some things going for it. For one thing, it's very versatile. You could use this as an anti-tank gun, an anti- okay. I should have just, I was going fine. I need to go with the flow. I didn't need to stop. Okay. The ASP has a few good points. For, mm, the ASP has a few good points. The ASP has a few good points. For one thing, it's very versatile. You can use it as an anti-aircraft gun, an anti-tank gun, an anti-personnel gun, really anything you need. Uh, you can defend a Cobra base from any form of attack. I 
I imagine the ASP was designed by Destro, and his innovation is to allow it to switch ammunition types on the fly. So inside that little blue body are different ammunition types that can all be switched over uh, with the flip of a switch from inside the cockpit. So when the pilot needs to shoot at an aircraft, switch over is an anti-aircraft gun. If the, if the gunner needs to, uh, to shoot, okay, I had something good going there. Let's start it over again. I imagined the ASP as designed by Destro, and his innovation is... Uh, I imagined the ASP as designed by Destro, and his innovation is to... Uh, I imagined the ASP as designed by Destro, and his innovation is that it can switch ammunition types on the fly. So if the gunner needs to shoot at an aircraft, he can have anti-aircraft fire. If he needs to shoot at a tank, he can switch over ammunition types and use it as an anti-tank weapon. All without changing the ammunition. Everything's internal. It can happen. Um... I very much like the color. I love that classic cobra blue. It doesn't... I very much like the color. I love that classic cobra blue. It doesn't exactly match the color on the old cobra trooper and cobra officer, but it's pretty close. And you look at it and you instantly know that's a cobra vehicle. Vehicle. Now i got to try to remember all the things I was going to say about it. Um, its primary limitation is the same as any... Its primary limitation is the same as any towed weapon. It doesn't go anywhere on its own. It has to be hooked to something and towed. Uh, and so it really is only mobile in conjunction with another vehicle. But that's okay. Uh, I still like it as uh, an emplacement. Its main limitation is the same limitation as any towed weapon. It... <clears throat> Its main limitation is the same limitation as any towed weapon. Uh, it is... Its main limitation is the same limitation as with any towed weapon. It doesn't go anywhere on its own. It's only mobile in conjunction with another vehicle. But that's okay. I like it as a stationary gun emplacement. Although it didn't have a lot of great moments in the cartoon series, it actually did have a few good moments in the comic book series. Some memorable moments. Although the killer whale destroyed a number of cobra asps, I do appreciate that the asp was able to get its revenge and revenge. Wow, I'm an Oki from Muskogee. Um, okay. G.I. Joe's hovercraft, the killer whale, took out a number of cobra asps in the comic book, but I appreciate that the asp was able to get revenge and take out the killer whale. I'm going to be drinking after this. All right, let's see. Um, I think it's time to wrap it up. Man, this was hard. This was harder than I was expecting. Uh, this is, I'm trying to make a, like a full real review out of this thing, but it's really small with limited features. Um, I think I'll say that. Yeah. And that's all I can think of to say about the Cobra Asp. This kind of review is actually kind of difficult, doing these uh, small vehicles. And that's all I can think of to say about the Asp. A review like this is actually kind of difficult. Uh, these small towed weapons without a lot of features, uh, it's hard to make a full review out of them. Uh, there's really only so much to say about them. Ah, 
but I know what I'm doing next week. Okay. Yeah. So next week, I think we'll do a figure, and we're going to do a really great one. Hmm. Okay. That was my review of the 1984 Cobra Asp. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, I say this at the end of every video. You think I can do it right. That was my review of the 1984 Cobra Asp. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please... Uh... That was my review of the 1984 Cobra Asp. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and support the channel on Patreon. Man, more, normally I have more to say than I can fit in the video, but this time I'm trying to... I feel like I've said everything I've got to say, and I still feel like it's going to be a short video. All right, I'm trying to give you guys quality. I'm trying to give you guys something, you know, to sink your teeth into. But this one's not been easy, not at all. Um... Thanks to all the patrons for Thanks to all the patrons who voted on this one. Oh. Mm. Thanks to all the patrons who voted on this one. We will be doing more of these patrons choice reviews throughout the year. If you'd like to find out how to get involved, just check out the Patreon page. Let's just wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. I am so tired. This is why I normally do these things on different days. Because I'm too tired, usually, after shooting the core review to do this part. But that's okay. That's okay. We did it. All I have to do is the end part. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week with another video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. I'm not giving up that catchphrase. That's mine. Well, I stole it, but it's mine now. Uh, okay, is that it? Um, I think it is. Uh, they're gonna be, you know what? I'm going to do, do bloopers for this one. Bloopers. There are plenty of them. You just saw them. Um, okay, that's it. That's it. Um, <clears throat> I've got a skit that I'm going to do uh, that you will see at the beginning of the video, but um, I haven't shot that yet. I've got to do that probably tomorrow. Um, and uh, that's it. So now you've seen the whole process, more or less, from start to finish, uh, and I apologize. Um, I feel like I kind of let you down a little bit. Uh, by not uh, really having good notes for the opening and the close. Uh, normally that would go a lot smoother, uh, but uh, on this occasion I felt like I could be a little more loose um, and kind of uh, uh, come up with st stuff on the fly and kind of improvise um, because I felt like I knew the material pretty well um, and so I would know what to say and you know I might save a step by just doing it on camera rather than typing it out and then doing it on camera, but um, that turned out to be quite a bit more difficult than uh, than I expected. Uh, so that's a little behind the scenes. That's not really exactly how every video goes. You know, I do figures are different, have different segments, um, and uh, vehicles, uh, larger vehicles, of course, have a lot more involved. But uh, if I were to do something like this for one of those, it would be much longer. Um, and it would just not be practical. As it is, this video is, oh, coming up on two hours. I can't believe I got this done in two hours. 
Normally that would have taken longer. Oh my God, it's only taken two hours. What am I going to do with all the free time? Edit this, because this is going to take forever to edit. That's okay. That's what I do. That's what I do. All right. That was fun. Was that fun? No? All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Um, you'll see this posted, um, uh, I guess, after the ASP review. I hope you do like the final product. Uh, I'll try to, you know, uh, uh, I'll try to add stuff to, to improve the quality a little bit. Uh, but uh, that's it. Um, maybe I'll do another one like this in the future. Uh, but if I do, I'm going to plan it a little better. Uh, so, all right, I'll see everybody uh, next time. Uh, and now I reach up and push this button to turn it off.